so we're just getting on here. So what I've actually done is I've put the little activators in the undercarriage. They're in there now and the one around the nose as well. I've also put the um, identification little spikes. They're on the bottom on there as well. So they're all fitted in. Now to get a nice good flush fit, what I tend to do, get a bit of sanding stick and I just give them a rub where they've obviously come off the sprue and it makes them nice and flat and they go on very well then. And then what I've got just down here, which is probably just a little bit out of sight, but is a little bit of um, masking tape with a drop of super glue on the top. And that way you can just pick it up, come along and drop it where you want. And then once you're in, you can just make sure you're all square. And then I use a knife just to push down. The reason I use a knife is because then it doesn't have much area where it can stick to. So it should just stick to itself like that. So we do that one. And then we've got these going on the sides, which are always the tricky ones to line up and get square. So we just put this facing me. Okay, and then what we'll do is we're just going to take some tweezers to hold it a little bit better. And this one, because these spiky ones go to the top. And then you want it to sort of follow the, the pattern of the power line it's going on. So that goes on just like that. Then there's a smaller one that goes to the rear and below. So same thing again, we'll just dunk that in. What you can do to make these well done is give them a touch of extra thin um, glue. Nicely. There we go, yeah, just a drop. And what that is, the capillary action will run round it and then it'll actually sort of all weld it together and hold it all nicely. So we'll just give that a bit of a push because I don't like the way that, that bottom one's sitting. It just needs to rotate up. This is the thing about getting them to point in the right direction. It's quite important, otherwise they look a little bit odd. But say, you've got some extra thin here. Just got a bit on a brush and all we do is touch it around. And don't worry if it discolours. Um, it's just obviously where the, the paint works wet, um, but it will dry around. There we go, just like that. So we do the same on the other side, and then we can get the seats fitted, which will just be a drop of super glue, and then we'll pop them in. Don't put the clear part over the top with the super glue because the fumes might fog it up from the inside. But we'll just get those bits fitted. Okay, so now basically we're done with the, the model. That's all done with the flanker itself. So we, now we can do the weapons. Um, as I say, normally I don't do these on the videos as separate, but these are a little bit odd and different. Quite large missiles. What I've actually done is bored out the back just with a couple of drill bits. A small one first, then a large one going right behind it. So that gives you a sort of a nice shallow little dip on the back. Gives them a lot better than just being a flat piece of plastic. Now, obviously these are white in reality with black fins. So when you look at it, there's lots of different ways we could do this. We could just spray it all white and then hand paint it. Um, the actual the fins are all in the black area. Um, the other way is we could spray the fins black and then mask them over but there's quite little lumps and bumps that uh, actually where the fins join the fuselage which is going to be quite tricky to get round and do uh, on them all. Um, so really there's no best way of doing it. It's one of those things. Personally I'm going to spray them all white completely, let them dry and then come back around and pick out the actual fins by hand. I think it will just be a lot easier. And then if it is looking bad, then what we can do is mask up um, afterwards and just spray in perhaps a little bit white if we've gone wrong a little bit. Um, but it's one of those things. There is no real right or wrong way of doing it. That's just two ways you can actually do it. So we get these sprayed up now. So what we're gonna use is some X2 white, which is just flat white. We'll just fire up the compressor. So I say, a good little technique for this, obviously we've scooped them out the back. If you get a drill bit in there and you just extend up the hole a little bit up the back, so we just get that up there like that, and then you can come along with a cocktail stick, and then it needs to be a little bit deeper. So we can just push that straight in up the back. Okay, and that's a good way of holding it then, so we can just do it like that. So if I just do it a run through with the one, then I'll follow through with all the others in exactly the same way. So usual thing, spraying white can be a bit of a handful to do. So the way I do it is neat straight from the bottle, no messing around with thinners. So it could shake obviously first. Little drop in the color cup, just like that. And then when your pressure comes up to sort of above 20 PSI, we can just spray it white.
Now it is having a hard time spraying it and all the rest of it, but at the same time it does it in one pass instead of perhaps taking lots of passes to do it. But there we go, that's all sprayed white. So what I'll do now, I'll just do all the others, we'll let them dry, come back and then we can do the black work. Right, so as you can see, we're basically done here. We're all painted and white and all the rest of it. So we've just picked a couple out to start with. Now, a good quality brush will be a, quite a, a handy thing here. If I just move this out of the way, you can see it a bit better on the cutting mat and bring you in a bit. So what we've actually got, you've got this um, these area here, you can see there's a line running down there, so we want to keep the line at the front white and the back area is going to be black and then obviously all this back area is going to be black anyway. So if I bring that a little bit, we just angle this down a touch. There we go, so we're just going to pick some up, okay, and very carefully try and do it by hand as best we can. And it's going to be a long old job to do all of these unfortunately but it's all part of the modeling process so we just do this fin here so we're just going to go along and do the sides and the back now we don't have to be too accurate as we go around here because what we're going to do we're going to put the black wash over this um, and then what it will do is actually it will go along and uh, fill in any little cracks and bits and pieces as it goes so hopefully that help us uh, quite a lot getting on all the little details because there's nice recess panel lining on this so hopefully it'll all look good in the end so if I just do this one here There we go, that's the front bits done. So we'll just carry on with the back part. So there we go, all done. So if we just bring you in, you can see what we've got here. Too close. <coughs> so we see black pins at the back, nice ones at the front, obviously they're drying off so we're going to go and let that stand and dry off for a few minutes and carry on with all the rest of them. Okay so those weapons have been drying now, now they're obviously still a little bit wet <coughs> so if we just grab a couple of the ones we've been doing a while. Now we're going to use the um, Pro Modeler's Black Wash, give it a nice shake and all we're going to do is just going to run this right the way around. Now you're better off using the black than what you would do if you were going to use the um, other colours. And what you want is a nice clean brush. He says, desperately trying to find a clean one in here. There we go. <coughs> now it doesn't matter if you use the bubbly stuff or the actual <coughs> the um, the thick stuff underneath it. But the bubbly stuff I think tends to give a more oily effect but all we're going to do is just literally go around it now this hasn't been coated or anything because we want it to look slightly weathered as well so you know if you wanted it to be nice crisp panel lines with it then obviously do the same as you do your aircraft and actually go along and uh, pop um, a lacquer coat over the top oh sorry a lacquer coat a clear gloss coat over the top so you just get your panel lines but there we go that's that one done like that so we just stick that in there for a moment and then we just come along and do the black around here. And then hopefully, as I was saying, it will just grip to it a little bit, weather it down, make it a bit dirty. Also, it will tidy up all the lines around the black where we've done the black work. So we'll right the way over the seeker head and up the fins as well. And the capillary action will pull along all the panel lines and hopefully just crisping it all up. So what we'll do, we'll just give that a, a few moments to go off, give it about sort of 20 minutes to dry off, I do the rest of them, then we can come back, wipe them all off and hopefully we'll have nicely weathered weapons. Right then, these have all been drying, let's say for about sort of 15-20 minutes, 
So if we just pull one off the peg, all we're going to do, we're just going to grab a cotton bud, or you could use a bit of tissue, whichever you want to do. And we're just going to give it a gentle rub around. Now we don't want to over rub this, so you don't make your cloth too wet. Let me just move that out of the way and I can bring you in a bit. So you can see what we're up to. So we say we just moisten it and we're just trying to go around. So we want it to look grubby. So that's what the wash will do. It will stick to it because it's over a you know when we put the the actual coat of uh, white on there it was obviously a very very thick heavy duty coat so what we'll do we're just going to go around and sort of clean this up as we go I'm just cleaning around but as I say don't over clean it but there we go that's how I'm going to leave this particular one perhaps a touch more around this middle collar but apart from that as I say nice grubby looking missile just like that and that's ready to fix so we just get it all off of the others now okay so as you can see we're final steps now armed as you can see on there as well so we've got the aerials done so the last two things to do really are the navigation lights obviously on the uh, wing tips and bits um, and obviously at the front here we've got the seeker head now obviously we did overspray this we didn't attempt to mask it or anything else two things you could do you could paint it gloss black be very nice effect all the rest of it because it has got a black camera inside it um, so you know there's nothing wrong with that or you could clean it off and go clear um, obviously cleaning it off various different ways you could do it you could sand it off um, it's acrylic but it's very hard on because it's the guns which is a lot harder but certainly what you could actually do is scrape it clean bit of polish bit of future over the top do it that way you know the choice is personal with yours a bit of thinners and you could wipe it off and clean it off whichever way you want to do it there is no wrong way of doing this because I've done it all those ways in the past um, this time what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to give it a bit of a, a sand off just to clean it up roughly so I'm going to use um, a couple of uh, fine sanding sticks so if we just get we want a sponge as well that's it some of the smaller ones that I've got here and what we can do is we can put a little bit of uh, masking tape just to protect the uh, side there that's all we'll do Literally, I'm not that worried about it. I don't want to go near the decals too much because obviously we don't want to run the risk of breaking those or getting them to tear or anything else like that. So what we do, we're just going to pop just a little bit of tape just down on this side for the moment. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to sand with quite a, a coarse one to start with. And we're through. So what we do, we're just going to pop around, and then obviously you can use a sanding stick, something like I've got one of these multi ones, which will be coming up soon uh, in the Pro Modelers range. So we can actually just go along and clean these up a little bit. So if we use the coarser one just to get going, and then we can go through the the various grits. We're just cleaning that up and we'll come along to a finer one. And then what you could do, you could use the blade of your knife just to make a nice clean crisp edge. Which I'll show you in a minute, I'll get the camera a bit closer.
So we're just going to cut them to a nice smooth side, just to polish that up a little bit. see what I'm doing a bit closer here so as you can see now we just got that nose all done nicely up there so with, with a drop you could leave it as a matte finish to give it that plasticky look or certainly you could come along now and give it um, a bit of gloss around there just to shine it all up but as you can see now it sort of gives it that nice uh, look to it now so if we just peel these bits off carefully we should be able to and there we go, we haven't affected around the area at all, but that's on there just like that. So we're all happy with those. So one of the last bits to go on after that, as I say, personal choice, you could gloss that now or just leave it as is um, and work around. So you've got, let's say, the lights to go on and also we've got the, I've just painted the um, needle for the nose, which will just go in. This one is obviously, um, is gonna be sent away, it's commissioned. So obviously I'm not gonna fix the nose. It'll just be a push fit for the moment. And then when it gets to its destination, uh, they can choose if they want to fit it or not. Okay, we're all just finished. Um, pit hot tubes on the front. I've done the, the greeny gray area um, for the first segment as it comes off the end and then silver onto the front bit. It's a loose fit at the moment. It's just pushed in there purely because obviously for moving around, it's easier to slide it in afterwards. Um, the little uh, sighting system at the top here, the pirate sight, literally put a little bit of silver around there um, just to give it a sort of worn look and it makes for a nice sort of demarcation between the plastic area and the silver and a drop of clear just to brighten it all up at the front. Lights have gone on the side, use a bit of X, uh, X27 clear red Tamiya and a bit of um, X25 clear green, just for the lights on things like that, just to put them together. Fantastic kit, goes together very, very well. Um, the only two areas with it, take your time with those intakes, getting them sorted out um, to make them a nice sort of seamless fit. You know, it's one of those things, play with, and then, you know, just take your time, sand, filler, leave it a couple of days, come back, see if you've got any shrinkage and go through it like that. The other thing, these slats at the front tend to be a bit of a handful to put on. But there again, if you do it like I showed you, really, with a super glue weight, it's pretty straightforward. You can just pop them along and go along them all. Really enjoyed the build. It's a big kit, so you're going to need plenty of space to put it. Um, it's quite nice working with the different um, paints like we've done on this, using different those tones and shades. As I say, I've probably done five or six of this particular kit now, and all of them, I can honestly say, are different colours, um, purely because of the way that the actual um, the paints work and you're mixing them you never mix the same color the same twice um, but it does go round and you know you sort of you can random weather post shading on this one a little bit different came out very very well just dulls it down again and that's what we're trying to do with all of these we're just trying to dull it down and weather it without going along um, you know as we could have done with pastels and things and put oil streaks all off of it I've gone for an all over sort of dulled down muted look instead of going for you know spot on weathering and all the rest of it it's a great kit to build out the box you don't need to go around and you know spend lots of money on this type of kit to get yourself a nice presented kit if you were going to do it you could replace the cockpit it's a little bit bare and you've got a nice big glassy area so you could do that um, and obviously the burner cans at the back you can replace those with a set from Aries um, to give you a sort of overall nicer effect sorry it took a bit of time to um, get this one together but obviously we had a delay unless you're just watching this for the first time and then all the parts have been there one to five and you're all okay but apart from that it's been a fantastic build thoroughly enjoyed it and if you've enjoyed it join me again next time